Good morning and welcome to the daily devotion from Stirling Baptist Church, where every day we are turning our focus toward God as members of our church bring us reflections on his goodness. For more information about Stirling Baptist Church, go to stirlingbaptist.org and you're welcome to get in touch with us through our Facebook page or by emailing us at admin at stirlingbaptist.co.uk. Well, good morning to you from sunny Bannockburn. Uh, my name is Rob Donald. I'm one of the pastors at Stirling Baptist Church. And uh, whether or not this is your first time uh, tuning in to church or if you're a regular attender uh, with us and you're taking the opportunity to be connected with us by uh, joining into these devotions, uh, a, a real warm welcome to you. It's wonderful that we're able to use technology uh, to be able to be together. And as this week is a significant week, it is our Easter week, then um, please take the opportunities to tune in every day from Monday to Friday. One of the staff will be leading us in a reflection based on the Gospel of Mark. And of course, we have a Good Friday service at 9.30 and our typical uh, Sunday service, but for Easter Sunday, at 9.45 and you're welcome to stream into those as well. I'm going to read, if I can, from <clears throat> Mark 11 and just the first section there known as the triumphant entry. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village in front of you and immediately as you enter it you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches and they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming king of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. And he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Amen. God's word to us. And so as we, we come to this passage, there's a significant shift here. There's a a gear change going on because up to this point in Mark, Jesus had been hiding who he was. In Mark 8, for a classic example where Peter, when Jesus asks who he is, finally Peter says, you are the Messiah. He recognises who he is. And, and in the next verse 30, Jesus responds by warning them not to tell other people what they know. Why does he do this? Because it's not his time yet. He doesn't want people to rally around him as king, rally around him as Messiah. But now in Mark 11 his time has come. He is declaring very clearly that he is the king. And for all to see and we'll see exactly why he's making it very clear in just a second. For the Romans this might not have been a very significant thing. 200 years ago Simon Maccabeus had uh, pushed out the foreign rule and had brought um, uh, an independence to Israel. And he was celebrated by coming in on a horse as king. But Jesus doesn't do that. He doesn't come in in a warlike way, in a warrior way. He comes in a way that's not really one that you would expect, not really one that is respectable for a king to enter. And he comes in peace and humility by coming in a colt, in a young donkey. But we see the significance of this if we look at Zechariah 9, verse 9. It says this, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. It is that, that Jesus couldn't make things any clearer. He's saying, I am the promised king. I am the promised Messiah. And verse 10 of that section goes on to speak of how he would bring peace to the nations and he would rule over all the earth. There's a sense here that that where Jesus previously had been keeping things quiet, where he'd been holding back from fully making himself known to others. Maybe this is what the Jewish leaders had feared all this time, that, that Jesus, who constantly revealed their own hypocrisy to them, who, who undermined their authority, which really was Roman authority they were relying on, here came along Jesus, 
And he said, I am the king. I am the true Messiah that had been promised all. And for three years, maybe they'd feared that. And we're thinking, oh no, this is a terrible time. What's Jesus going to do? What's he going to cause? What trouble is he going to make for us? And then we see in the passage a very strange ending. It says in verse 11, he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is not this is not what you would expect of this moment. He has a crowd around him, they're cheering, they're, they're chanting, they're praising him really for who he is. Hosanna for the coming kingdom of David. And he, he gets down and he goes into Jerusalem and he looks around a little bit and then he says, Well, you know, it's late, I think I'll go to bed. And he goes out of Jerusalem back up to Bethany and goes to sleep. It's rather anti climactic. I mean, you could imagine, couldn't you, if you were invited to someone's surprise birthday party and you're you're having to spend that 20 minutes kind of in an awkward position hiding behind the couch or something, waiting for the person to come and they come into the room and everyone jumps out and says, surprise! Happy birthday to you! And you get through the whole surprise and you finish the song and the person says, well, thank you for my surprise. And then leaves. <laughs> and, you know, and you're thinking, well, you know, you haven't had your gifts, you haven't any, spent any time fellowshipping with your friends. The whole point of the party the surprise was just the first part. But after the surprise, they leave. In the same way, Jesus is making a, a declaration of who he is. He comes into Jerusalem. People are recognising and, and, and affirming his declaration. Yes, you are the king. Hosanna, highest. Hosanna to the king of David. And then he leaves. <laughs> it's maybe not surprising to us that these same people who were shouting, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, would just a few days later be shouting, crucify him, crucify him. And so in this amazing story, amazing story because it, it reveals who Jesus is. He knew there would be a colt in that village ahead. He told the disciples, go and get the colt that you find. Throughout, he had known people better than they knew themselves. He'd known things about people that they never thought anyone knew. See, Jesus has this amazing, he knows everything. Amazing insight, amazing knowledge, amazing understanding. And yet he doesn't do the things that we expect him to do. And these are the two reflections. First of all, that we know that Jesus is king, but he's not the kind of king that we expect. For us, particularly at the moment, in light of our situations, we're thinking a lot about health and wealth. We're thinking about the damage to our economy, but we're also thinking about um, our own fear of infection of this virus it's easy for us to think well Jesus if you're God then you should be doing this and this and that you should protect our economy and you should bring us health and these are good things to ask God for but it's more important that we come to God and say we know you're king we know you're righteous and you're loving and you're mercy and we know that because when we look at the cross we see the ultimate act of love and of righteousness and of mercy and grace See, the, the cross reminds us that this is a God who gave up everything for us. Jesus took on sin, the very thing he couldn't stand, all the things that are offensive to him, he took on himself in order that we wouldn't have to carry those sins before God. We can come into God the Father with confidence because Jesus has made a way for us as our Saviour. And so though Jesus might not be what we expect, he is what we need. Like a good king, like a, a good leader in any situation, they do the right thing, the thing that's best for people, not the thing that people want. Lots of us want different things, and it's understandable. In this day and age, we want uh, power, we want respectability, we want influence, we want to be famous, we maybe want health and wealth and prosperity, but all of these things are nothing compared to what Jesus offers us. Jesus offers us life to the fullest. He offers us a relationship with God the Father. The very thing that we were created to have, our purpose is to enjoy God and worship him. And so committed was Jesus to that, that the Easter message is that he came from heaven to earth to make that available. And so today, Jesus makes himself known. Jesus, through his word, through his Bible, 
He's making himself known. He's so clear to us, just as he was when he rode in on that donkey fulfilling uh, Zachariah's promise in Zechariah 9. He's coming now and saying, I am the true saviour. I'm the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I've come for salvation, for peace, that you might know it through me. So follow me. He might not be the kind of king that you expect. He might not be the kind of saviour that you expect, but he is the kind of saviour that each one of us needs. And he has made himself gloriously available to us at total cost to him, that we might know him in all ways. That no matter what happens in this virus, and it is a fear, and I understand exactly why it is, Whatever happens to our economy after this situation, we know one thing for sure. Jesus is king. Our salvation is secure. He will never give up on us. No matter what happens in this world, he will never leave us and never desert us. And that is the message of the unexpected king. The one who doesn't do things according to the way that we desire, but does do things that are for our best interest and for our own good. He's gone and given us everything that we could ever need or imagine. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord.